Good morning, everybody, and welcome to the channel. My name is Michael for AudiWorld.com, and today we're checking out the all-new 2022 RS3. Long live the five-cylinder. Now, in terms of power and specs, there has been a slight boost here for 2022. 401 horsepower, 369 pound-feet of torque. And what's particularly interesting about this is that this is the not only the maximum for an Audi 5 cylinder, it's the maximum for an RS3, and it's also the maximum available worldwide because in Europe, they've got extra emissions and exhaust restrictions that leave the horsepower there to the equivalent of, oh, around, I think, 396 or so. The previous RS generation had a lot more kind of body matching, but they have, they've widened the grille here, and they've added extra cooling and intakes here, and all of this is active. You've got extra coolers kind of tucked in here behind these vents, and there's arrow here that goes to help cool the brakes as well. Over here, we've got the Matrix LED lighting. This particular one on the driver's side does a little special Easter egg. When you unlock the vehicle, it actually flashes RS3 and the checkered flag. Your daytime running lights are also the checkered flag. Also worth noting here is that we've got a black optics package vehicle, which is going to add the the black Audi logo, the black roof, other black accents. All right, coming around to the side of the vehicle, what we're going to notice here is we've actually got two base tire and two wheel options. This is the all matte black wheel. There's also a wheel that has kind of a polished kind of front sections. These tires that we're seeing on this particular loaner, they're Pirelli P0s that are 245-35-ZR19s out back and 265-30-ZR19s in the front. So it's staggered with wider in the front. You can also get Bridgestone Potenza tires. I think those are the all season tires. And then you can get Pirelli P0 Trofeo R tires, which are your track oriented vehicle, something you don't want to drive in the rain or in cold conditions. The other things you're going to notice is that you've got a wider front end than the S3 with this functional vent right here. Moving around here to the back of the RS3, you know, the black optics package continues here with the spoiler. You've got this kind of fake black valance and black honeycomb going in here, kind of hiding the reverse sensors. You've got the signature oval exhaust tips. This is actually the $1,000 performance sport exhaust. Checking out the trunk space, you guys, uh, pretty good for a compact sedan. Got this nice tie down right here, and it's got a nice wide opening, pardon the exposure, but it's got a nice wide opening for putting things in and out. It's not the biggest in the segment, it's not the smallest in the segment. All right guys, so coming into the interior here, you're gonna notice that this one has the design package. This is the color here on this one, I forgot to mention, is Kyalami green. It's metallic green, it looks absolutely fantastic. I'm not much of a green guy, but this one is slowly winning me over. And this is kind of the uh, launch color, so to speak, in the sense that it's going to be one of the colors that you can match the interior. So you've got the green stitching here on the seats, and you've got the green accents here on the vents. You're also going to see a more complete piece of the matte carbon fiber in this one. This one also has the Alcantara steering wheel. It's going to have the technology package. Uh, so this one is pretty much loaded out. Stepping in here to the back seat of the RS3. Sorry for the lighting. We're out in the desert. But what I am experiencing sitting here is that there's not particularly much legroom behind my own seating position. I'm about six feet tall. So if you were even taller, uh, look, this is not a place for adults to go on long road trips or anything like that. Around town in a pinch, I think you can make this work. But it, this is not surprising for a compact sedan. Base pricing is starting at $60,000 with destination and delivery. The one you're looking at here is it's priced around $65,000. You've got a black optics package. You've got the sport exhaust. You've got the tech package on the inside. All right, guys, and here is the model. Sorry for the echoes. Here's the model that we used on track. So this is going to be one of those that's like $72,000, $73,000 kind of mixed in there. This one has a whole bunch of very cool options. 15-inch ceramic rotors. It is the same calipers, but with different rotors and pads, of course, these are. And you can see the word ceramic on there. So these are part of the Dynamic Plus package, which also ups the top speed of the vehicle to 180 miles an hour from the electronically limited 155 on the standard base model, so to speak. You're also going to notice the carbon fiber package on this one here. Carbon down here, carbon out Back, which looks really, really nice. It's also a slightly larger spoiler lip. Let's check out the zero to 60 testing here and cruising over to a launch point. We're at Spring Mountain Racetrack and I'm doing this, this is technically the skid pad, but as 
far as I can see, this is not it's not a prep surface or anything like that. So this is should be generally speaking real world. And so to engage launch control, foot on the brake, you got to be in one of the performance modes, and then you know rev up the engine and let go. Oh yeah, that's better. <laughs> all right, all right, here we go, here we go. Oh, 4.11. All right, all right, verified. A couple quick notes about the our best zero to 60 run, which was again, 4.1 seconds. Worth noting that we're at 2,661 feet. The DA is 5,566 feet. And if we had done a one foot rollout test, which is more like how Motor Trend and those uh, and car manufacturers measure their tests, our 4.1 is worth a 3.81 seconds. So at this elevation, this temperature, 4.1 is, uh, is pretty fast. Setting off in the 2022 RS3. We are now cruising through the deserts of Nevada and California out by Death Valley. Mainly the goal here is to get a sense of day-to-day -day driving experiences, braking, acceleration, comfort levels. In terms of driving modes in this particular car, there are three basic driving modes and then there are three RS driving modes. So first up, you're gonna get your comfort driving mode which is going to drive more like a front wheel drive car. It's also gonna be the most comfortable in terms of the suspension, the throttle mapping, the way that the car shifts and all those types of things. If you set up into auto, that is supposed to be the most balanced. So that's your set it and forget it everything mode. It kind of balances the car front to back in terms of power and torque vectoring. And of course, I think it retains the comfort mode in terms of the suspension and the adaptive suspension there. Next up, we go to dynamic mode, which is your kind of your sport mode. You're gonna have a sport shifting mode kind of set, you know, even though it's still in the automatic mode, it is a sporty mode, so it's gonna hold your revs longer. Uh, you're gonna have more, you know, more throttle mapping, so more aggressive tune there. And you're also gonna put a little bit more of the power out towards the back. Next up is your RS individual mode. That is your custom mode, basically, where you can set everything up individually. That's what I'm actually driving around in now. I've got it set up to be in sport, kind of shifting sport, steering sport, throttle mapping, all those things, but I've left the suspension in comfort mode. It's a way I typically prefer things, particularly with Audis, and it's really paying off here out in these desert roads. Some of them are ultra smooth and glass-like, and other ones are kind of old and cracked, and the comfort mode definitely kind of soften things up and makes things really nice. Next up is RS performance mode. That's what we're gonna be testing out on track, and that is basically, again, it's a neutral balance mode is the goal there, what Audi told us, and the idea is that you don't wanna have any oversteer or any understeer when you're going around driving hard on the track and the last mode is RS torque rear and that is effectively the mode that you're only supposed to drive on when you are on a closed circuit a closed course off-road use only from the lawyers and in RS torque rear mode that is going to be able to send most of the power out to the back turns off all your trash and control settings and you are gonna be able to do drift mode, which again is another thing that we're gonna try a little bit later today. Now, in terms of the rear differential itself, it is the same hardware that you're gonna find in the Golf R, but there is new and updated software that's being used that's brand new here for the RS3. And it's actually a really interesting system. I think a lot of folks, both enthusiasts and journalists, uh, what Audi was telling us, they're getting hung up on whether or not the car can shift torque front to back. But the main thing that they've told us to take away and the main thing that they're excited about in terms of this technology is the way that the rear differential splits torque from more from a side to side perspective now the way the system works and this is very i'm oversimplifying here but the way the system works is that there are wheel sensors wheel speed sensors in all four corners there's obviously uh you know there's a front differential that's sending the drive shaft out back and then there's the differential that i've been talking about in the back and all of those things in addition to the adaptive suspension all those sensors are working in tandem to let the car know what you're doing are you accelerating are you braking are you turning hard which way are you turning and all those different things and in doing that the system is going to tell the rear differential in particular where to put power and the way they've set it up is that the harder you're accelerating and the harder you're turning the more power is going to go out to the outside wheel so if you're turning left the right wheel will get up to 100 percent of the available torque and same if you're going right the left wheel is going to get 
up to 100% of the available torque. So it's not really about whether or not you can send all the torque backwards, it's really about what the car is doing. So in a scenario where they said that, like let's say that you had all of the traction in the back of the car and you had no traction up front, well, the car is gonna send all of the available torque to the rear, it's gonna basically send it wherever there's traction. So is that technically 100 front to 100 back? No, but it's about as variable and adaptable uh, as um, you know a front bias system I think is going to be. And here, driving out here, there's a lot of straight roads, but what I've been experiencing so far is that when you are getting up and going, you, it's almost like the car has a rear steering effect. You can feel it kind of pull you around the corners here. Let's go ahead and talk about the transmission. It is a seven speed dual clutch transmission. I don't believe that there is uh, too much change from prior iterations of this transmission, but I believe it has been beefed up just a touch to handle the extra power and torque. Like most modern dual clutch transmissions, it's uh, it effectively acts like an automatic transmission. You're either in comfort mode, which is in standard drive mode. And of course, if you're in like your RS performance modes or your dynamic mode, you're gonna have a more sportier shifting setup in kind of its automatic mode. To enter into manually shifting, go ahead and click the paddle shifters, which puts you into manual mode. And then once you are in manual mode, uh, you can bounce off the rev limiter. It will not up or down shift for you. Uh, and to get out of it, you're just gonna pull back on the shift lever to get back into D or S mode. I will say that it shifts uh, reasonably quick. It's not the fastest DCT that I've driven. You know, there are some, we know when you're clicking off the gears and it just goes instantly, right? And here, there's just a touch of a delay. It's faster than I would say most standard, you know, torque converter automatics and so forth. But generally speaking, it's working out pretty nice. It is comfortable around town and just kind of in your comfort drive mode. And then it really kind of shifts nicely when you are accelerating. In terms of interior fit and finish, this is gonna be very similar to your A3 or your S3. We've got RS badges everywhere including on the seats, but I think these are basically the same seats as the S3, if I'm not mistaken. They feel very similar. I wish they were ventilated, particularly out here in the desert. Audi, hear me out, folks. Ventilated seats, make them standard in all your RS vehicles and all your performance vehicles. Heck, make them standard over a certain price point. They are a godsend out here in hot climates. But overall, it is a very nice, lovely, comfortable place to be. You could easily commute with this. And let's go ahead and find out what it is like to drive on the track. My experience so far has been supremely positive here on the track, particularly with these Pirelli Trofeo our tires. They are stupendously sticky. This car feels balanced. It's very quick. You can put the throttle all the way down and these carbon ceramic brakes are terrific. These things have been beaten on for the last few days. Journalists who don't own these cars out here a hot track, 100 degrees, and I'm really, really impressed with the technical capabilities, with the speed, weight, power, balance, and, and all those things. It's a, it's a lot of fun to drive. But one thing I will say though, however, is that, uh, so I, yesterday, I was in the last group, so the, this car, and the two others that are doing the track duties, they have been going around this two mile track, flat out, one set of tires for two days, basically continuously. And by the end of those times, the brake pedal was feeling a touch squishy to me. Although I will say compared to the street tires, maybe it's just the carbon ceramics themselves. Maybe they just haven't bedded in yet since these are fresh from Germany cars. Whatever the reason is, the brake pedal feels a little bit more squishy here. And there was a couple times towards the end of yesterday where the, when I was braking hard, the wheel kind of juddered just a touch. Didn't make me feel unsafe, but it was just something worth noting. But again, when you're heavily tracking your car, like these are things you're probably gonna experience after doing, I mean, this car, there was 10 journalists here yesterday, 10 the day before, and it, these cars spent all day doing hot lap after hot lap after hot lap. So that's basically just something I wanted to let everybody know about. It's not necessarily a criticism, just something I have observed because I'm not a super track person. Now, on to the drifting. You know, basically what I want to say is that drifting is not my forte. I'm not an expert in it. So I was really apprehensive trying it with this car, but going into the first turn, turning full lock to lock, flooring the pedal, 
I mean, you guys, this is an all-wheel drive car with a front bias with wider tires up front, with 265s up front. And this thing just started spinning around and it was so shockingly easy to control, even for a novice like myself. To watch the pro do it, it was even cooler, but it was just like, the torque curve is great for drifting and the car is so well balanced. I don't know, you feather in, you're feathering the throttle and you can just control it and slide around and slide to the sides. It was just, it was an unbelievable joy to drift this car. No hype, no exaggeration. Like if you bought one of these and you went to the appropriately safe places to learn how to drift, like you, I think you could come become relatively good at it, though you need to have the, uh, the tire budget for it. So, all right guys, final thoughts on the RS3. I'm doing my cool down lap here absolutely blown away great power great traction great balance comfortable out on the road you could commute with this thing the seats are excellent although they should be ventilated Audi hear me ventilate all your seats every single one but outside of that one little nitpick absolutely enjoyed my time with this learn how to drive a little bit better on track as a novice again as a novice learned how to do a little bit of drifting with this thing it's an all-around luxury performance compact sedan I think it does an excellent job if you're looking at something like the CT4V Blackwing, also give this a consider. Both of those cars are outstanding, by the way. That one has rear wheel drive, a little bit more power and a manual, but this has got the DCT on all wheel drive in drift mode. Of course, I guess any mode in the Cadillac would be drift mode. But anyway, thank you so much to Audi for having us and the folks at Audi World. Please join us on the forums there to join the discussion or leave a comment down below if you're watching this on YouTube. Thank you again so much for watching. I hope you all are well and safe, and we will see you on the next video. Hooray! I don't know if I did much cooling down. <laughs> this car is so fun. I might have to do another hot lap. <laughs>